Everybody, it's Kyla again and welcome back to Life is a Story. Now since the NHL has started their playoff season this year and uh, we just had the Women's World Championship in Brampton, Ontario, uh, yeah congratulations Team USA for winning gold and beating out Team Canada, I guess. <laughs> no congratulations Team USA. Um, but I thought because that's happening and there's a lot of hockey going on right now, I thought, why not talk about my hockey experiences? So sit down, grab a hot beverage, and buckle up because it's a long story. This was a major part of my youth, so here we go! <laughs> now, you may not know it to look at me now, but in my youth, I was quite the athlete. Uh, sports was very important to my family. My dad made sure that we all played sports. So, I mean, I was playing t-ball and then turned into baseball by the time I was nine years old. Um, I played badminton. I skated. I played hockey. I, you know, I've even done pro wrestling. Um, so, a lot of those are stories for another time. But today, we're going to concentrate on hockey because out of all of them, in my adolescence, hockey was the most important thing in my life. Like, it was really, really, really important. And uh, I've got tons of jerseys and, and uh, I have sweaters and things like that. So probably throughout this thing, I will be switching it up and wearing different ones. This is from a goalie school that I went to. So we're going to go from there. Obviously, I was a goalie and uh, I'm, I'm not going to be modest at all. Um, I was good. Like I was, I was damn good. Uh, and um, this was still around at the tail end time of when girls hockey was rare. Um, I mean, girls played hockey. There was female hockey. There was women's hockey. There, It was there. It just was in the area in which I grew up. It was very rare. It was still kind of a novelty. We were about maybe 10 years away from really getting competitive in female hockey. And we were about 15 years away from the Olympic team. So uh, I just missed out, but I know, I knew then that I was that good. And I was a very shy, humble person back then, but uh, I, there's no place for humility for this to me. I'm sorry, I was damn good and I would have been pro had I been about 15 years younger. <laughs> so I just missed it. But um, yeah, I, I, I know that I was that good and I don't, mind saying it. I was that good. I, I, you know, but it was still a rarity a little bit, and especially in the town I grew up in, um, to have uh, aggressive female competitive hockey players. So, um, because of that, I actually did make stuff like the local paper and I made local news TV shows and things like that. And, uh, yeah, that was something, something that I'm, I'm, I was proud of and that I'm still proud of. And, uh, I guess we'll start with the story. I'll start off with my father's insistence that all his children learn how to skate. And uh, I always make the joke that I learned how to skate before I learned how to walk. But honestly, that's not far off the mark. <laughs> so as soon as I think I took my first step, my dad you know, slapped a pair of skates on me and threw me on the ice. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we love, you know, skating is a big thing in our family. And um, I know I figure skate from age eight to 11. I was a figure skater and I learned how to figure skate loved it was good you know I, I got all my badges and I won three bronze or yeah three bronze medals for competitions that I was in and stuff like that but because of cost because it was crazy even back back then it was insane you know but um I I had to make a choice and that was quit and do nothing or quit and play hockey and uh so I, I quit figure skating and I started to play hockey and uh, right away right out of the gate, I was like, okay, well, uh, dad's a goaltender, cause, uh, and I've watched him, so I bet you I can do that, so I'll be a goalie. So right out of the gate, I went from that little tiny teeny figure skating outfit to, boom, goalie's pads. And I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. 
there's a bit of a weight difference on your body about, uh, you know, not having anything except a figure skating outfit to about 20 pounds of equipment on your back. Uh, so yeah, the very first practice I went out on the ice and goalie equipment um, that was lent by the arena that I was practicing at and I despised it and I said I will never do this again. So actually for the first half of my very first season, I was a right winger. Not many people know that. Everybody just associates me as a goaltender. But for half a season, when I was 11 years old, <laughs> I was a right winger. <laughs> so I continued with right wing. I was uh, worried that I wasn't going to enjoy it at all. And I wanted to make my dad happy. And, and I was kind of, I don't know, going from no equipment to all this equipment. I was really nervous that I wasn't going to enjoy wearing all this bulky padding and everything. But as the season went on, I was enjoying myself. I mean, I was not fantastic as a forward, but I wasn't bad. I mean, this was my very first season, right? You can only get better, right? Right? But <laughs> so um, I'd say halfway through the season, um, the coach came in while we were dressing for a game and he was in a panic. And he was like, for whatever reason, the goalie can't make it tonight. So he's like, can anybody please put on the pads and, and play goal for just, just for tonight? And by this time in my head, I was like, well, I'm used to these pads now. So I bet you I can handle those now. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And he, even my dad, he turned because he was put my skates on. He's like, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'll do it. Why not? I can I can give it a shot again. Like I didn't like it the first time, but maybe this time, uh, now that I I know what it's gonna feel like, I'll go for it. So I didn't have goalie skates, and this arena didn't have goalie skates. But and I don't even know if arenas still do this, but they actually had spare equipment that I could wear. I don't know. Do arenas still do that? Um, so they gave me some juvenile pads, and they gave me you know like a chest protector and all that kind of stuff. And uh, basically with just my regular hockey skates, they tossed me out onto the ice and said, okay, just, just stand in the way. <laughs> basically was the, was the, was my goalie coaching at that time. They're like, just stand in the way. <laughs> so I skated out onto the ice and uh, at age 11 played goal for my very first time. Now, if you're lucky, you find something that you sit back and you go, I was meant to do this. And I'm very fortunate that I've experienced this three times in my life. It's like there are three things that I've done in my lifetime that I go, I was born to do these things. One is photography. One is performing arts, singing and acting. And the other one is goaltending. Like I couldn't believe it. This, I, I got in on, on that ice surface. I went, between those pipes and I realized I found home. I found something that I was supposed to be doing for as long as I could do it. Bear in mind, uh, I am an old school goalie, so I was not strictly a butterfly goalie at all. Um, I learned from um, people that I thought were brilliant and uh, my dad being one of them. And I remember distinctly in this game I, because I would watch my father play and someone would take a shot at me and I remember my brain literally thinking I've seen dad do this and boom I made a kick save and uh people were like what <laughs> and then uh, there was uh, even once in that game I made a stack pad save now if you don't know what a stack pad save is because this is very old school it's if uh basically it's, it's a desperation move on the goalie's part where you basically slide on your side and you stack the, go the, the, the goal pads one on top of each other. It comes, you know, the one leg goes up and then comes down and you've stacked the pads together like that. Um, and I could hear the audience or the crowd. They, they were literally shocked that I was making these stops. And dad was in the crowd and he said people were saying to him, this is the first time she's been in net ever? And he's like, yeah, she's never played before in goalie. And they're like, oh my god. Like people were stunned that this little girl <laughs> out there was playing goalie for the very first time and making saves like this. And not only did it get the audience members excited and it got me excited, it got my father excited and I'm a daddy's girl. I wanted to please my dad and my dad immediately, <laughs> immediately decided, yeah, this is what she's going to do and we're going to make sure she does it. <laughs> Within five minutes after coming home and walking into the house, my dad 
took me downstairs to a bookshelf and he pulled a book off the shelf and it was uh, a goaltender from the Montreal Canadiens named Jacques Plante. And uh, he's famous for normalizing wearing a mask for goalies. And goalies didn't normally wear masks back then. Uh, but he got hit in the face and went, this is stupid. I'm putting a mask on. <laughs> so, uh, so he's known for that. But he was also a very famous goaltender. And uh, he wrote a book on, on techniques and how to play goal. And he's like, read this. So I'm like, okay. So I read the book. And within, I'd say a year after that, I was taking weekend courses at Jim Park's goalie school. He would come on the weekends during hockey season um, at the local arena and I would learn from him. And then it wasn't long before he had a goalie school in the summertime uh, at another local arena. And it was like literally just a week of intense training. Now, I don't know if Jim Park still has his school running. Um, I, it is. It's been a long running school. Uh, Jim Park was in a professional league at the time called the WHA, which was World Hockey Association. And he played for a team called the Indianapolis Racers. And he was also on the AH, AHL team for the New York Islanders. Wow, that was a mouthful. Nang! For the New York Islanders. So the man knew his stuff. And I can honestly say that ugh, everything that I learned came from my father and from Jim Park School. He was amazing. He was an amazing teacher and I absolutely loved him. And I had a natural affinity for goal. And everybody knew it and I wanted to get better and I wanted to play more aggressive hockey and I wanted to play more competitive hockey. And the caliber for where I was living just, it wasn't quite there, you know? So I was like... How, how do I get better? My dad's like, we got to get you into a better team. So we're going to have you try out for the boys team. The boys rep team. Not only, it wasn't just like their house league team. He had me trying out for the boys rep team. Now, I mean, girls have been playing on boys hockey teams for decades. I'm not the first one. And I know I'm not the last. I mean, so it's like, it's not like that was a big deal so much, but... In the area in which I lived, it was still considered rare, and uh, I, you know, I was I was trying out for a very popular, successful boys rep team in the area, and I was going against two of the best goalies in the league ever, and uh, I was holding my own, which apparently is still a novelty at that time. So they were like, okay, we're going to get local newspapers and we're going to get this paper. And so I was like, all of a sudden I was kind of being featured a little bit in newspapers and I was on like news t television shows and things like that. And it was just like a feature of like this little 14 year old is trying out for, for like boys hockey teams and boys rep. And everybody was very nice. <laughs> um, everybody was like, oh yeah, you know, she's, she's doing really good. And, um, and, and she's, oh, I think the coach was saying, you know, like she's got her work cut out for her, but she's really aggressive at it and things like that. Jim Park even was interviewed for one, for one, uh, interview or for one newspaper and, uh, said, I, I don't think, I, I never considered it sexist. Maybe it would be now, but, uh, basically he said, if you saw her out there competing against other hockey players and you didn't know she was a girl, you wouldn't know. And... I don't, I don't think it's a sexist comment, um, but maybe it is now. I don't know. But uh, I, I took it as a compliment that, that the Jim Park, you know, my teacher thought this about me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but it was, I mean, it was kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I, I was very proud of myself. I was a proud of the, what I was achieving. I was a proud that I was getting women's hockey out there. Because like I said, in the area I was in, it was still considered strange or rare or a you know like novelty that go oh, girls play hockey but um yeah it was it, it kind of there was jealousy on some of the parts of some of the uh other girls that I was playing hockey with um not the boys actually the, the ones that treated me the best were the two other goalies that I was competing against for a position on their team they treated me great I don't know if maybe they they figured oh we weren't, she's not getting in so we'll just be nice to her anyway <laughs> <laughs> or if they respected me as a player, I'd like to think that's what it was. But out of everybody, they were the ones that treated me 
the the best with they actually treated me with respect and they respected me as a player I'd like to think that that's what it was and um, but yeah I, I did feel some animosity from some other people and uh, a little bit of disrespect and for me respect is a huge thing so the popularity and the the, the, the publicity was cool and I you know I'm a publicity fiend so <laughs> so I enjoyed it in that respect I liked getting my name out there I liked being seen I liked being known but at the same time I was facing things from other people that I wasn't expecting and um, that was that was a bit weird to get used to um I didn't make the team I didn't make the, the rep team uh, I, I personally think I was good enough I really do I personally think I was good enough my father thinks I was good enough but you know he was a proud papa so but <laughs> but I, I I just have this feeling that the coach as nice as he was, wasn't quite ready to break that barrier and um, replace one of the other goalies whom he has worked with for years with me. And um, But I think I would have made a really good backup goalie for that team. But, uh, you know, I was proud that I tried and, um, you know, got myself out there, got myself known. I actually was picked up by a woman's league. I was 14 years old. I had to have, my father had to sign waivers and there had to be something to do with the, the town I was in at the time. Had to sign, you know, I had to get waivers signed by them. So I was allowed to go to a different city. Uh, apparently that was a thing back then. And uh, I played for a woman's league for a while. I was a backup goalie for a woman's league in another city. So that was interesting because again, the caliber was up. And while I was, you know, doing backup for that team, my father was out and about looking for other girls hockey my age uh, that was competitive and the caliber was a little bit higher. So we were busy. <laughs> this is a story I love to tell. I absolutely love to tell this story. Um, this just goes to show that even though as a teenager off the ice, I was extremely shy. I was quiet. I was reserved. I was basically not a happy person. I was a kind of an emotionally messed up teenager. Um, as most teenagers are, but I was pretty bad. <laughs> but on the ice, I knew I, I knew I ruled that ice. Like that's, that was my attitude. I ruled the ice. And, um, <laughs> I was 15 years old. I had been going to Jim Park goalie school. So uh, I, I was like, I know it. I know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I'm the queen of goaltending. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like, I know it all. So I was pretty cocky and I, there was one morning there, I guess there was free ice in, in the local, um, arena and it was early in the morning. And if you wanted to go there and play shinny, or if you wanted to just skate around and do a free skate, you could go for it. So we got up really early in the morning, my dad and I, and he took me down, he dressed me in my equipment. He's like, get dressed in your equipment and head on out. So I got on the ice and there was nobody else there. There was just my father and I. And then halfway through, this other guy showed up. He was a young man, maybe, you know, in his 20s. And uh, I didn't recognize him. But he was skating around. He had a hockey stick and a puck and he was shooting it and stuff like that. And uh, found out who I was. Well, like that I was a, a girl who was practicing with her dad. And he walked up to, or he skated up to my father and said, would you mind if I took some shots on your daughter? She seems pretty good. And he's, my dad's like, yeah, go ahead. So this guy started shooting on me, doing little shots here and there, and I was stopping them. So then he's like, oh, okay, so we'll get a little bit feistier. And <laughs> so he shot harder and did this and that. And then he kept scoring and scoring and scoring. And I was getting angrier and angrier and angrier. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, why is this man scoring on me so much? I can stop shots. I was like losing my mind. I was getting so, so angry at myself and um, pouting, just pouting. And this was maybe for about 15 minutes and I was frustrated. I was angry and I'm like, you know what? Ice is done. I'm done. I'm going to go change. And I left. And when dad and I were in the car and I'm sitting there like, hmm. Um, my dad was like I talked to him afterwards and he said don't worry and I I cannot remember this man's name and this is what pisses me off is that I can't remember his name to tell you who this was but um, my dad was like he told me to tell you not to get too upset because he plays in the NHL and I looked at my dad and I'm like well who is he 
and I, I swear, I cannot remember this guy's name, but he played for the Sabres in the 80s. That's all I can tell you, the mid-80s. And he's like, well, he's so-and-so from the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm like, well, I've never heard of him, so that means he's not very good, so I should have been able to stop him. Stop his shots. I was still so mad because this guy wasn't Gretzky or he wasn't Lemieux or he wasn't any of those people. Therefore, I should have been able to stop his shots even though he was in the NHL and I was a 15-year-old kid. So <laughs> that's how conceited I was. <laughs> So I went through my adolescence playing for many, many different teams um, on, in many, many different places. I don't know if after a while you didn't need a waiver anymore from the hometown. I, I have no idea. But, uh, I mean, I played for Burlington, Brampton, Brantford, um, Stony Creek, Salt Fleet. Uh, my two favorite teams were Burlington and Brampton, but those are stories that I'll get to eventually. Um, and I, all that was important to me was improving. I wanted to be the best goalie that I could be. I wanted to be the best goalie ever, to be honest. But <laughs> I wanted to be the first female in the NHL, but Manon Rayom spoiled that for me. So, <laughs> But uh, I just wanted to improve my game. I wanted to be as good as I could be. And I had many favorite goalies in the NHL. But there was three in particular that I would watch and try to emulate and be like. One being uh, the Leafs goalie, Alan Bester. Alan Bester was short, and I'm short. I was only four foot eleven. Actually, I think when I was playing goal, I was only four foot ten. So I wanted to watch him and see how a short goalie performs in difference to a taller goalie. And uh, I just, you know, I was a short goalie. He's a short goalie. You know, see how that works and everything like that. Plus, I was a really avid fan of his, and he was really, really cute. And I was a teenager, and that was important to me. <laughs> So I still have a scrapbook, an Alan Bester scrapbook. It's got autographs, newspaper articles. He was one of my favorites. I've got an autographed jersey of his, of his on, you know, with Alan Bester signing it. So I loved Alan Bester. Still do. Think he's great. Um, so it was a short goalie thing with that. But the other two goalies will probably give you what my attitude was like on the ice as well. Um, the other goalies that I tried to emulate, one was the New York Islanders goalie, Billy Smith. And the other one was the Philadelphia Flyers goalie, Ron Hextall. Pretty violent guys. <laughs> Temperamental, violent, nasty guy goalies. Um, yeah, I, I watched a game once where Ron Hextall almost decapitated Chris Chelios. You know, he just took his goalie stick and went, BAM! And uh, I was good at swinging the goalie stick too. So I had my fair share of penalties. I didn't lead my team in penalties or anything ever th like that. But, and I couldn't shoot a puck to save my life. Not like Ron Hextall. I could not shoot a puck like that. There was no, I've had an assist, but I, there was no way I was ever going to score a goal. <laughs> but uh, it didn't stop me from trying, but uh, never could be like that. But uh, I was also very, I could be violent. I was not nice. If you hit me, I was hitting you back twice as hard. Um, if uh, you were in my crease, Oh, God, heaven forbid you be in my crease. My crease was my domain, and if you got in my crease, you were going down. You were going down. <laughs> it's just like, you do not come into my crease <laughs> at all. And um, I went by the adage, if you can't take out the puck, take out the player. So, yeah, I was, I, I would like to just say I was feisty, um, but I was short, so I was adorable while well, I did it. <laughs> But yeah, my, my, you know, two of my three favorite goalies of all time were ones that had no problem, you know, taking a man down and slashing the back of his legs and ending careers. So, um, yeah, that was, I was, any aggression uh, or teenage, teenage angst that I had, I took it into the ring or took it into the, took it into the rink. And, um, yeah, I, I got penalties more than I probably should have. <laughs> I had a lot of highlights uh, while I was playing hockey. Um, a lot of great times, awards, you know, won tournaments. I've, I've won MVP for my team several times and stuff. And I mean, I know it sounds like I'm bragging, but it is true. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of that, so I don't mind saying it. Uh, but I'd have to say the highlight of my adolescence for hockey was the uh, the Winter Games, in on the Ontario Winter Games in 1988. It was a tournament, obviously, for, you know, the best in Ontario, um, in North Bay, Ontario. 
And uh, I right now my triumph is that I fit back into this sweater. So I'm like, yay! <laughs> this was a sweater for the All Ontarios. Um, yeah, so <laughs> in North Bay. And uh, I've kept it all these years, even when I didn't fit into it, because I'm very proud of this tournament. Um, mainly because... I mean, aside from the fact that it was a lot of fun, I uh, got to travel to North Bay, which I'd never been to before, uh, had a good time with my teammates, but we weren't supposed to win. We weren't supposed to win anything. We were supposed to come in last because we were literally called a ragtag team. Um, I don't know who thought this up or whatever, but the, I was playing in Burlington and the coach of that team got together with my dad and decided that we should compile a team and head out for this tournament in North Bay for the All Ontarios. And um, it was like, oh, okay. So there wasn't enough players for this tournament to get to the, where we needed to be. Um, with the, the team we had, so we started recruiting people from other teams. So that's why they called us a ragtag team. It was literally two to three weeks before the tournament started, the team was assembled. And I know I got a, a team picture somewhere. There was three goalies, and everybody is somebody that I had played with on other teams before, so we all kind of knew each other. But we had never played together as a one cohesive unit before, and this was the first time, and we had three weeks to do this before the tournament and we went in there and everybody had this blase attitude of this team that was just tossed together everybody knew for some I don't know how everybody knew but everybody there knew that we were literally just tossed together and we were expected to be demolished and come in last in the entire tournament they're just like yeah okay whatever and um well that's not exactly what happened very first game we lost to the favor team the, the the favored team that everybody expected would win which was Mississauga and uh, we did lose to them and that was no big surprise to anybody and uh, it was just sort of you know like oh yeah it's, it was gonna be an easy win for them so but then, then we played the next game and we won and then we played the next game and we won and we won and we just kept winning to the point where <laughs> um, the, I think it was one of the coaches said to, to my father, he was just like, okay, um, don't tell me you guys are actually going to make it to the finals. So we made it to the finals <laughs> and I played that game and we were playing against Mississauga, which was the team everybody was expecting to win. And, uh, <laughs> um, we lost, we, we lost two nothing. We, it was, the score was zero zero all the way until the third period. And then one person scored on me and it was somebody that I knew. So, you know, I had to beat her up later, but I, no, I didn't. <laughs> somebody that I knew she scored on me. And then the second goal was an empty net. And when it came time for the game to be done, we were ecstatic. We didn't care that we lost the game. We won the silver medal in the Ontario Winter Games. We were the second best in Ontario and we were expected to lose everything. We were literally called the ragtag Burlington Wolverines. I didn't even know our name was the Wolverines until it was in the newspaper. You know, <laughs> it was just like... I was shocked. Our team was shocked. We were so ecstatic and we were happy for the other team. We were just like, way to go, Mississauga. Way to win gold. This is so awesome. We will take our silver medal, our silver medal, which I still have and I will cherish till the day I die. It's not really silver. It's kind of white and red, but now yeah, it's okay. It's silver medal. You know, and I was so proud. I wore this proudly. I still wear it proudly. We were so excited because we went there and everybody believed that we were going to go nowhere. And we got to the final. Uh, I, the coach of the other team, actually, when we were shaking hands, he came over to me specifically and said, I have never seen a team so happy to lose the final game. I'm like, we didn't lose. We didn't lose at all we got the silver, you know, I was like, <laughs> we got the silver. I was so excited and I'm still so happy. Um, but that day, because we all understood the insurmountable odds that were against us, we all felt great. We all felt great. And I think that was the day that I realized, God, anything's possible. <laughs> 
Um, there's actually another funny story that I'd like to segue into. This was also while I was playing for Burlington. <laughs> And I don't even remember remember where this tournament was. Um, <laughs> basically, five skaters and myself showed up for one of the games in these tournaments. And it was like, um, do we still play? Like, can we? And, and basically, the referee said, if you guys want to play, go ahead. And our mindset was, yeah, okay, we'll play. We'll play the game. We'll play the game where nobody gets to take time off <laughs> and have a, have a break or anything. So we were committing to playing five skaters and one goalie on the ice for the entire game. 60 minutes. I think it was 60 minutes. Yeah, we had three 10-minute periods back then. And uh, we're like, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. And the crazy thing was, for two periods, we were. We were winning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then by the third period, we all started getting a little tired because I had had more shots on me than usual from that, you know, being on that team. It was a pretty decent team and I was getting a lot of shots. So I was getting tired. And then the skaters, because they were not taking any breaks, they were getting tired. And by the third period, people were purposely getting penalties so they could sit off the ice for two minutes. And I'm like, I can't do that. Don't do this to me. Um... But it was so crazy. I think we were about 17 years old, maybe 18. I, th I think 17. But um, it was so bad or so crazy, I'd say. More, more crazy because to me, this isn't actually a really good memory. But it was so crazy that <laughs> the parents of the other girls on the other team were cheering for us. <laughs> they were like, oh my God, I can't believe these girls are still going. And so they were cheering for our team. We did lose. I think by the end of the game, I'm like, there's the net. Shoot it. If you hit me, it's your fault because I ain't moving. <laughs> but we were so tired. But we got, we became known. We got popular in that tournament because we were the team that showed up with just enough skaters to play the game. So, <laughs> so I, I love telling that story. It's such a cute little fun story. It's a very short story. But uh, yeah, I don't even remember where the tournament was anymore. But it was just like, I remember people getting purposely getting penalties just so they could sit off the ice for two minutes and I'm sitting there on the net going hey what the hey I tossed this uh this one on this was a team that I played for uh Brampton Canadettes and um this was a tournament that we played in in Brampton we were hosting the tournament and it was the world's largest hockey tournament for women in Canada at that time and why I did that is because this year um, the tournament for the world's the women's world hockey championship was in Brampton so Brampton has been a serious hockey town for women for a very very long time as you can see this tournament was 1992 God, I'm so old but <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to point it out. Uh, I'll, I'll turn around and show you the back, maybe, if I can. Um, it just got my name on it, and I'm all, Woo! so, I don't know, I don't even know if you saw that. But, um, yeah, so I was, I played in the tournament as a Brampton candidate, and, um, was very proud of that team. I have to say that that was my last season of serious competitive hockey. Um, was for the Brampton Canadettes, and as luck would have it, it was an awesome team. The players were awesome. I got along with everybody. Everybody was just awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I have played on some teams where, you know, people did not get along, and there was fights, and there was... Like, you play on some teams where there's great camaraderie, and everybody gets along, and then you, I played on some of these other teams where, oh my god, there was, like, fighting. We didn't even get on the ice to fight with another player. They were fighting with each other in the dressing room. You know, I'm just sitting there trying to get my pads on and go, all right, let's just get this game over with where it's not fun. And you want it to be fun. Yeah, you want it to be good. You want to improve your game, but you want to have fun too. The Brampton Canadettes, when I played, I was 20 years old. It was my last season of super competitive hockey and we got along great. And we won the championships that year. I think we won this tournament too. I don't have a trophy, so maybe we didn't, but... <laughs> I don't remember, but I, I don't know. I know for a fact that we won the, the league. It was the league that year. Uh, we were first place. We won. And uh, what I remember about the final game for that one was there was a fight at the end of the game, but not with 
ourselves, but at the end, it was literally like an entire brawl. I don't know what happened to prompt this. Uh, I was just playing my game. I was just the goalie, right? And I just played my regular game. I was aggressive. Um, but that was it. Once the game's done, I was just like, okay, I'm done. You know, the game's done. <laughs> But something happened during the, the handshake at the very end of the game. I guess that's why they do the handshake now before the game. <laughs> but literally everybody's pile on top of each other. And then if you look at one end of the ice, at the, you know, the circle, there was myself. And at the other end was the goalie for the other team. And we're just standing there watching going, what's going on? <laughs> like, well, why is everybody so mad? But yeah, so that was crazy. That was the craziest thing with that. But uh, I took the plaque home saying that we won, so... That's the bonus. <laughs> After that season, I went to college and um, was, you know, more worried about my studies and, and my college years and my schooling more than I was with hockey. I was basically playing just some rec hockey then. I was playing, you know, like rec women's leagues and things like that, which is fine. I, there's nothing wrong with it. I was just having fun and keeping in shape. And my plan was once I graduated, I was going to get back into competitive hockey. But uh, because of certain things that situations and life choices that I made that didn't work out that way. So um, I played the rec hockey and that was pretty much it. That was the end of my hockey career. Hockey is not really a huge part of my life anymore. Um, I, I still go to games. Uh, I'll watch, you know, like the NHL playoffs on TV. Uh, I watched some of the women's um, championship games, you know, for the world. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. But I mean, because of stuff that was going on in my life, I hadn't even skated after I finished college. I didn't skate for about 25 years. So uh, my brother finally got me a pair of skates and threw me out on the ice at 2019. And uh, I like to, to go skating now so that's the best I can do is just skate <laughs> and I skate in a circle and I'm so proud of myself that I'm skating in a circle but uh, you know I'll still watch the occasional playoff hockey game um, for the NHL I still have my favorite teams my favorite team didn't make it into the playoffs this year but uh, shh. <laughs> you know the, I when I go to a live event the smell of the rink still brings back memories I love the smell of an arena and I'm not talking the sweaty part I'm talking about the smell that emanates from the rink itself there's like a I don't know if it's like an ammonia or a peroxide something there's something in the ice that puts out this odor that is very pleasing to me and I think it's because it makes me think of my days as a hockey player which was so important to me in my younger years. And, um, but as a whole, you know, like, I can't see myself ever playing hockey again or even attempting to play hockey again. Um, I, I'm sure there's some senior women's rec league out there somewhere, but there's no way in hell I would play anymore, uh, simply for the fact that my knees couldn't take it. I know that I would probably go down for a butterfly and I'd be like, I can't get back up. I can't get back up. The arthritis in my knees is so bad. I go down and I'd be like, Hold on, let's blow the whistle because now I'm down. Okay, okay. okay. Ah. <laughs> All right, I'm good to go now. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I'm i very, very proud of my hockey days, but, but they're done. So I just enjoy the game visually now by watching it. And uh, I have fun that way. And I don't miss it. I, I, I enjoy my life as it is now. So yeah. I remember a few years ago, I think it was the last Olympics, uh, the last Winter Olympics, uh, my dad and I were watching Team Canada's women's hockey, and um, I guess my dad was feeling nostalgic that day. I don't know. Um, because of him, I learned how to skate. I got into sports. I um, He coached several of my teams. He drove me all over the province to, to play games. He drove me to the States to play games, for crying out loud. He watched me win. He watched me fail. He watched me grow as an athlete and as a person. And um, he did this all for me in a time when competitive girls hockey still was not popular. And uh, he suddenly turned to me and asked, he's like, are, are you upset that you never had the opportunity to compete at this level? Because you would have made it, you know. And uh, I did pause and think about that. And I'd be lying if I said that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to do that. Of course I would. Who wouldn't want to be in the Olympics, right? Um, but I'm not bitter. You know, like, I, I just, I was born 10 years too soon. And 
you know, there's nothing I can do about that. So what's the point of getting upset on something that I can't change and never could have changed? So I just sort of looked at my dad and was like, no, I'd like to think that I was, uh... oh, I wrote it down here. And it's like, not actually, I feel proud. I'd like to think that I'm one of many girls over the decades who helped pave the way for women's hockey to reach the level it is now. And that's not bullshit. That's, that's, that's the honest truth. You know, like, I, I, I'm not saying it's all because of me. It's all because I made the local newspaper that women's hockey is now at an Olympic level. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but I'd like to say that I'm a little chunk of history kind of propped into girls hockey that helped girls become professional hockey players. Um, I'd like to think that I had a little bit, a little bit of a hand in that and a little bit of an influence and uh, paved the way so that the doors could be open for women today. And that makes me proud. I'm not, maybe I've mellowed in my old age, um, but yeah, that makes me proud. It doesn't make me jealous, doesn't make me upset. I see no point in getting upset over something like that. I did what I did. I'm proud of what I did. I still have, you know, like memorabilia from that time period. I have a lot of jerseys that I didn't show. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, that's my story of hockey. I have so many hockey stories, but those are the big ones for me. And uh, I'd like to think that that was my little contribution to history. So those are the stories um, that I wanted to tell about my hockey life back when I was a teenager. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I have a lot of really good memories about that time with uh, being on the ice and stopping all those pucks and yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to them. I, I enjoyed going through the memories and going through my memorabilia. I, I have a lot of other things too. And um, yeah, it was a good time. And I'm proud of the achievements that I made. And uh, it's just one more story that I can write down in my little diary of life stories. So just remember, you hold the pen to write the most amazing life story. Don't let that pen run out of ink. I'll see you again very, very soon. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and press that like button if you liked it. And be sure to subscribe to my other channels as well. Links are below. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. I'll see you again soon.